Thank you very much, uh, Mitusha. It's uh, both a pleasure and honor for me. A and today I'll be talking something different. I've had uh, over the years uh, occasion to talk on prostate cancer, but it's mostly been to do with multiparametric MR imaging and how things have changed over the years. I remember from uh, endorectal, uh, uh, you know, uh, MR that we used to do with the endorectal coil uh, beginning in the year 2004 to uh, today when uh, multiparametric MR has become actually the modality of choice for prostate cancer diagnosis uh, as well as uh, for local regional staging. Uh, uh, today, I've been asked uh, by Dr. Sikandar to speak on the nuclear medicine aspects of prostate cancer and how that uh, actually uh, is uh, where it falls in the entire armamentarium of uh, imaging of prostate cancer. So, I hope you can see uh, my slide. Yes, sir. Just trying to get it into the, yes. So we'll uh, we'll talk today about uh, imaging uh, with nuclear medicine and theranostics. Now one may wonder why is a radiologist talking about this? Actually, in the year 2000, 99, actually, uh, Gangaram Hospital had approached me. That, that they want to start a department of nuclear medicine. And uh, I had worked uh, before that, uh, 1990 to 92, as a radiologist at INMAS, uh, which is the preeminent institution, uh, at least was at that time, for nuclear medicine in the country. Also got the country's first MRI in 1988. And that's how I actually got interested uh, in nuclear medicine and started this center in the year 2000 in Gangaram Hospital. And in 2006, we got the PET CT. And I'll share with you, and we've been uh, since 2003 having DNB candidates uh, in uh, 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 nuclear medicine. And I'll, I'll share with you some of what we've done in the field of prostate cancer. Now, as you know, prostate cancer is the uh, second most common cancer and the sixth uh, most common cause of uh, cancer death in men. When detected early, prostate cancer has more than a 90% cure rate. It's really looked upon today as a chronic disease rather than as uh, cancer in the uh, you know term that we uh, tend to understand it. Um, the treatment is highly individualized and uh, Molecular imaging technologies are dramatically improving the ways in which uh, prostate cancer is diagnosed and treated. Uh, we know there's a variety of modalities available. We have the PET scan. Uh, for a long time, uh, to look at bones, we had the technician bone scan. Over uh, the last uh, 15 years, uh, there's also been waxing and waning interest in whole body diffusion weighted uh, MR to look at uh, the spread of prostate cancer. Uh, of course, uh, CT has its own role uh, for spread, which now with PET CT being there, uh, uh, CT forms an important component uh, uh, from structural imaging standpoint. And of course, ultrasound when you suspect uh, a, a prostate uh, problem, ultrasound is the first modality that is used and based on uh, the suspicion that one may have or one may, what one may find on ultrasound and Doppler, uh, one then uh, really now it's, it's established that one would go on uh, and get a multiparametric prostate MRI done. And there also we have the multiparametric and also uh, the faster uh, biparametric where you do a T2 weighted axial and diffusion. And that also is showing a lot of promise. 
but that's not the focus uh, of my talk today. Uh, we will be focusing instead on uh, where uh, nuclear medicine modalities are playing uh, uh, important role in this. Now, most of prostate cancer, most of cancer imaging uh, on PET scan uses FDG, which is fluoro, uh, 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 fluorodeoxyglucose, F18. And uh, unfortunately, in prostate cancer, this had a very, very limited role, uh, both in primary diagnosis, staging and restaging of prostate cancer, because prostate malignancies, by and large, are not FDG avid. They do not concentrate FDG within them. Uh, uh, but yet in certain uh, uh, limited uh, instances, especially when it's poorly differentiated prostatic uh, malignancy, there may be FDG uptake. And that really points to a poor prognosis. Uh, uh, so till PSMA, which we will talk about in detail, prostate-specific membrane antigen PET-CT came in, uh, FTG PET had hardly any role uh, in uh, imaging. And that's the time also when uh, whole body diffusion-weighted imaging, actually in the uh, year 2009-10, when it became available, uh, it was uh, showing promise till the time uh, the PSMA PET came in. Uh, the limitations also of uh, FTG PET are renal excretion of tracer in the urinary bladder can hinder visualization of primary tumor and pelvic lymph nodes. And that's why, uh, as in most cases, when we are looking at the pel uh, pelvis in any malignancy, uh, we make the patient void. We even take delayed images uh, so that we are able to uh, overcome this limitation. FDG PET even has a very limited role in detecting osseous metastasis. Now, gallium-68 PSMA PET CT, and this we started, we were amongst the first few private uh, institutions in the country which started uh, doing PSMA PET CT in the year 2014, that's uh, nine years ago, and this uses a gallium generator. Now, for those, I'm sure everyone knows, but for uh, the uh, uh, PGs who may have joined here, the FDG, which is the preeminently used isotope, is produced by a cyclotron. So, FDG cyclotron produces it. It has a half-life of 1 hour 50 minutes. And quickly from the cyclotron, these companies rush the isotope to us and we use it for scanning. On the other hand, gallium-68 PSMA is a generator. It is a generator which is lying in our radiology, in our nuclear medicine departments. And from this, we elute the substance and then actually, uh, uh, in a way, marry it with PSMA so that we, get, we are able to do PSMA PET. So this is something which is available in-house. Of course, the generator is very expensive, costs uh, nearly about 20 lakhs, and it lasts really for about eight to nine months. So it's an expensive proposition. But yet, if we look at the cost versus benefit ratio of a PET CT, it, I think, is weighed uh, very, very heavily towards benefit. Now, prostate-specific me membrane antigens is expressed on the cell surface and an integral membrane and is an integral membrane protein which is overexpressed manifold in prostate cancer cells. It is not released into circulation and internalized after antibody binding. So this is called receptor mediated endocytosis. And this PSMA is an excellent target for radionuclide imaging and also as we'll see later for therapy in prostate cancer. Now, this is just an example to show you what is the difference in the same patient between a FDG PET-CT and a PSMA PET. So, 
this first image on the left is a FTG PET CT where you do see some uptake in these vertebral bodies and uh, in, in the pelvic bones. But just look at this. This is PSMA PET CT. It is so very avid. You're able to pick up many more lesions which were not seen. And, and this actually, look at all the osseous lesions that are picked up. So this is the power of PSMA PET that even small lesions, tiny lesions, early lesions can be picked up, uh, be they osseous or in the lymph nodes or within the prosthetic bed itself. Uh, again, the same, look at this FDG PET CT and look at that uptake on uh, a PSMA PET CT. So one thing to clarify is that in case you want to do a PET CT in prostate cancer, you have to specifically ask for a PSMA PET CT and not just write PET CT. <coughs> now, what are the indications for gallium P PSMA PET CT? It, it can differentiate BHV from carcinoma prostate. This is an indication which is rarely used. Targeted biopsy can be done after a previous negative biopsy in patients with high suspicion of prostate cancer. We do know that fusion biopsy is uh, the preferred mode for uh, prostate cancer where fusion is done of the multiparametric MRI with the ultrasound and it's on that uh, ultrasound guidance using this fusion which is how biopsy is done but even there uh, sometimes biopsy may fail because uh, the lesion may not be as clearly depicted on uh, the MRI and this is where in a failed biopsy PSMA PET CT can show exactly the location of the lesion and targeting can be done. Then it's useful, of course, in primary staging in high-risk disease before surgical procedures or planning external beam radiation. It's important and useful in localized, uh, localization of tumor tissue in recurrent prostate cancer. Now, this is one area where we've done quite a bit of work. And, and, and till now, in these last nine years, we've done about 5,500 PSMA PET CTs. And one of the major indications is when there is, uh, 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 you know, recurrence suspected because of rising PSMA after uh, radical prostatectomy or after uh, radiotherapy, the PSMA, PSA levels keep rising. And that's when we know as radiologists that ultrasound and MRI haven't really been very, very useful unless it's a very... <clears throat> prominent recurrence. That's This is one area where it's very, very useful uh, uh, apart from looking at primary disease staging. Then it's useful in monitoring treatment response to know whether your treatment is working or not. And in staging before and during PSMA-directed radio-label therapy, which is uh, uh, mainly in metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer and we will talk about this uh, theranostics using lutetium therapy which is again something which is uh, 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 PSMA uh, mediated. Now in diagnosis this is a 63 year old male suspected carcinoma prostate with raised uh, serum PSA levels and this is as you can see here grossly enlarged prostate gland but you don't see any focal uptake <coughs> of uh, uh, PSMA in any uh, in the prostate. Uh, so here you can see that there is no abnormal uptake, and so we are dealing uh, with most likely a benign uh, prostatic enlargement. This is another sixty-four-year-old male suspected CA prostate, and most of these patients have had uh, their uh, multiparametric MRI done before. Uh, in most of them, a lesion is suspected, it is found, and then PSMA PET CT is done for further staging. So let me point out that for 
primary diagnosis of prostate cancer, I would still rely more on multiparametric MRI and the PSMA PET CT is supplemental as regards the primary prostate cancer, but is more useful for looking at lymph node metastasis and of course for distant metastasis because this is where <coughs> you know the spread can be found out. It's a whole body uh, PET CT and you're able to see spread. And here, this is the CT. And then suddenly, you know, you start seeing these bright uh, uptake within the prostate gland. And so this was a patient with a PSA of 44. Biopsy done four times, always picked up benign tissue. And so with this, we are absolutely certain that we are dealing with uh, uh, prostatic malignancy. And based on this, the biopsy was directed and this did turn out to be uh, Gleason's 3 plus uh, 4 lesion. This is a 65-year-old uh, suspected uh, uh, CA prostate, raised serum PSA. And here what you can see is this small, small area of uh, uh, uptake and this turned out to be uh, adenocarcinoma. So, for me as a radiologist, actually this helps me because apart from looking at the CT images, it tells me exactly where to look uh, uh, based on the uptake. So uh, many times, usually in most of other cancers, we do a CCT with PET. In uh, uh, prostate cancer, we do it as and when necessary. And so apart from the intravenous contrast, uh, this is another contrast where things actually light up like a light bulb. That is how uh, uh, exquisitely sensitive this uh, PSMA PET is for cancer of the prostate. For staging, again, like I said, this is a 62-year-old recently diagnosed uh, CA prostate, serum PSA 33. And with that, we know that this is not just going to be confined to the prostate. So after the MRI has been done, here you see this lesion, which is uh, shown, uh, showing uptake. And uh, uh, there, what you can see is that there are no uh, distant uh, metastases. Again, this turned out to be a 4 plus 4 lesion, uh, Gleason's 8. 68-year-old, recently diagnosed PSA 80. And, and here, what you can see, you can see, of course, the primary lesion. This is the uh, uh, urinary bladder, which also shows concentration uh, of the isotope, as you can see here as well. But here you see the lesion in the prostate, and you can see the iliac bone metastasis, uh, uh, <coughs> fairly large with the soft tissue component, and also metastatic deposits seen within the vertebral bodies, along with nodal METs, which you're able to see. So what PSMA PET CT does better than MRI, better than even uh, diffusion weighted MRI, where we generally use uh, a B value of 1500 to 2000, is that lesions within distant lesions, as well as lymph node lesions are picked up much more sensitively uh, uh, than what MR can. And, and of course, you can do multimodality fusion. Gallium PSMA PET CT can be fused offline with the, I, all these softwares exist uh, with most of the new MRs and PET CTs. And so once you've done uh, 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 MR, uh, we just heard uh, a talk on uh, the, uh, PET MR. And here again, we are using the power of MR along with the power of PET. And these uh, can be fused. The uh, uh, MR, of course, has limitations in the chest, uh, in the lungs. Uh, but, uh, uh, the, you know, since most of these patients already have had this done, uh, we can always use the previous MRI and fuse the two of them together uh, to show the uh, PET MR uh, kind of uh, lesion. For treatment response evaluation, it, it's again useful. Of course, P 
PSA levels themselves are also very useful. But uh, uh, to see spread or to see the, the, this is a patient who had baseline had this uh, liver mat and you can see on follow up uh, after treatment the lesion has become larger and also there is another lesion that we are seeing and so uh, this is again baseline there was no uptake uh, within the spine whereas here you are able to see uptake within the vertebral bodies so this uh, definitely is a treatment that is not working. Now for recurrence, and this is where, uh, uh, you know, this modality holds its own. This is a post-radiotherapy CA prostate rising PSA levels, which rose from 0 0.05 to 0 0.6 nanograms per ml. Uh, and uh, here what you see is uh, uh, local recurrence here. The small little lesion, which you're able to see uh, on the left side, within the prosthetic, uh, 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 you know, the residual prostate. Remember, this was post-radiotherapy. So the prostate, uh, though shrunken, is still there. And here you are able to pick up. This would have been, in fact, an MR had been done and it wasn't able to pick up. And I know as someone who is really uh, uh, more into MR than into PET-CT, uh, that uh, these are difficult, even in post-radiotherapy scenario. They are difficult to pick up on MR and are very, very tough uh, uh, in uh, uh, post-radical uh, prostatectomy. Now, I'll share with you our experience, uh, uh, which started, like I said, in 2014. And in the first five years, we had done more than 4,000 PSMA PET CT scans. So probably we've done uh, 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 more than 5,500 that I mentioned. Uh, and we've done three theses. Uh, topics on this uh, and uh, in RSNA 2018 I had actually uh, presented uh, 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 you know our data at that time it was I think 3500 cases that we had presented uh, in 2018. Now in the first one uh, we looked at the role of PSMA PET CT in patients with recently diagnosed oblique suspected carcinoma prostate. There were 150 patients and our results were that we found a sensitivity of 90%, a specificity of 80%, a positive predictive value of 95%. So when you found it, you know, it was very likely to be a prosthetic malignancy. However, the negative predictive value is low, significant, but still low, which means that if you get a negative PSMA PET CT, that doesn't still... Uh, uh, um, you know, conclusively rule out the presence of a lower grade of uh, uh, prostate cancer, uh, 3 plus 3, even 3 plus 4 at times. So most of them tend to be avid. The overall accuracy was 88%, which is very, very high. In the second, uh, 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 you know, research uh, thesis, we evaluated the role of PSMA PET CT in patients with biochemical recurrence of prostate cancer after definitive treatment. 170 patients analyzed and correlated the findings with post treatment serum PSA levels. And here, uh, determining whether recurrence is local within the prostate or at the urethral bladder anastomosis, regional, that is pelvic or distant uh, 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 disease is critical when considering appropriate further treatment options and early localization of disease recurrence after definitive treatment of prostate cancer is vital to determine suitability for salvage treatment. Now, morphological imaging methods are fairly poor in, in uh, picking up biochemical uh, uh, recurrence as are 18 FFTG or even 18, 11 uh, carbon choline. And these were all, uh, you know, uh, uh, work which was done uh, uh, before 2013, 2014, when PSMA actually uh, uh, became available uh, commercially in Europe and, and we were able to bring it from there. And, and uh, so this was... Uh, 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 um, are aimed to localize and restage carcinoma prostate using this modality in patients with biochemical recurrence and to determine the relationship between detection rate of PSMA PET CT and CM, uh, serum PSA level uh, along with the Gleason score. 
and uh, like i said uh, you know we analyzed these uh, patients we included men with suspected recurrent prostate cancer based on an elevated prost post treatment level of more than 0.2 nanograms per ml after radical prostatectomy and over a threshold of 2 nanograms 10 times above the nadir value post radiation therapy the data collected also analyzed the relationship of pre scan psa level and prior gleason score to the probability of a positive scan finding for recurrent prostate cancer in uh, 170 patients uh, 124 had previous radical prostatectomy and 46 uh, had prior radiotherapy Uh, the median serum psa in uh, the uh, radical prostatectomy group was 1.8 nanograms and 5.2 in the post radiotherapy group and what we found is that the detection rate of uh, gallium uh, uh, was uh, uh, 39.3% for psa which was between 0.2 to 0.5 nanograms so very low uh, levels 0.2 to 0.5 47% for PSA 0.5 to 1 68% for PSA 1 to 2 and 93% so very high percentage for PSA more than equal to 2 now this finding was was actually at variance with what had been reported at that time in literature and and those numbers were very small this number of 124 was relatively nearly 6 uh, 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 or 8 times larger than uh, that number um, uh, i need to tell you that uh, uh, psma pet got fda approval us fda approval only in october of last year so in the us whatever psma pet was done was only done as a research tool uh, for research and only after the us fda has given approval have the numbers started coming up we were lucky that we were given the permission to use this much earlier in 2014 so in this group local recurrence was identified in 28% and lymph nodal metastases in 65% so important to note that uh, lymph nodal mets are also responsible for uh, rising psa levels and it's not necessary that you have to find local recurrence in the prostate bed itself and this is just showing that and this is to show that as the psa level rose the detection uh, rate also rose and and these are actually the sites of recurrence in the post rp group now the detection rate in post radiotherapy group was 88.8% for psa 2 to 4 remember we had taken patients who were more than 2 in the post radiotherapy group so the detection rate was very high nearly 90% and it was 100% for psa level more than 4 and and uh, so this is something which is quite dramatic quite dramatic local recurrence after radiotherapy was present in 80% of this group and 63% so had lymph node metastases so note that between those who had uh, 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 radical prostatectomy we said the number of local recurrence in the prostatic bed was 28% whereas it is nearly 80% in post radiotherapy group the prostate hasn't been removed maybe there's a message in this uh, uh, and we need to work more <coughs> on on this aspect and the lymph nodal metastases numbers was 63% there 63% here and this is again to uh, a graphic uh, representation of the same now what was the relationship of gleason score with detection efficacy now if we look at that uh, uh, increased detection rates with increasing gleason scores were seen detection rate 63% for gleason score less than equal to 7 which increased to 76% for gleason score more than equal to 8 so as the gleason score Uh, rose the detection rate increased now this is a 73 year old uh, uh, adeno ca post radical prostatectomy and here you can see a small recurrence uh, 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 in a lymph node here 
was it disease which was uh, not identified at the time but uh, uh, this is what a small sub centimeter lymph node showing fdg uptake this is a 61 year old uh, radical prostatectomy pelvic lymphadenectomy raised psa 3.8 and here you see psa may have a lesion in the prostatic bed you see it here and of course abdominal pelvic uh, lymphadenopathy you see this in the lymphatic bed here 61 year old uh, post radiotherapy uh, um, his uh, psa rose from 0.72 at the baseline to 9.5 and here you see you know psa may have a lesion in the prostatic bed as well as uh, lymph nodal metastasis that you can see very well and this is another one uh, gleason uh, score 8 uh, post uh, prostatectomy post adjuvant rt on hormonal therapy and with raised serum psa 3.5 and here again you can see the uh, lesion in the bone you can see lesion within the prostate gland itself and lymph nodal metastasis all can be seen uh, in recurrence and this of course is a patient who had everything post radical prostatectomy psa uh, 29.5 and here you can see he has so many bony lesions which are detected uh, you know very very easily there's also a left supraclav uh, lymph node which is seen and and surprisingly no lymph nodes uh, you know seen in between now uh, this is a paper we published in 2020 in the indian journal of urology which was for localizing and restaging of carcinoma of prostate uh, um, uh, and histopathology uh, done and here what we found that out of 30 patients 16 had uh, uh, psma avid left pelvic lymph nodes and 18 had right pelvic lymph nodes on histopathology 19 patients were positive for left pelvic lymph node metastasis and 14 for positive uh, were positive for right pelvic uh, uh, metastasis in the lymph nodes and on correlating both the results of gallium uh, uh, psma and histopathology the cohen's kappa value came to 0.68 for left side uh, lymph node and 0.64 for right side and anything between 0.6 and 0.8 signifies substantial agreement uh, or concordance and so this is useful so uh, uh you know this is this is a case uh, again uh, ill defined lesion you see in the prostate and there is this lesion here uh, uh, within the lymph node uh, you can see a lesion here as well uh, de depicted now uh, in conclusion Uh, theranostics and this is something again that uh, we've started uh, about 6 months ago in one of our centers uh, for theranostics uh, for treatment for dose calculation uh, uh, we also need a gamma camera so you need a gamma camera along with a pet ct if you have only a pet ct alone you will not be able to do therapy now Theranostics is the combination of a diagnostic tool that helps to define the right therapeutic tool for a specific disease. And in nuclear medicine, theranostics is easy to apply and understand because of an easy switch of the radionuclide from diagnosis to treatment on the same vector. And and we all know radioiodine therapy, which has been around for a long, long time. So here, what is done is that. the same psma is actually used and here instead of giving a diagnostic dose we give a much higher dose and we know that this psma is going to go and concentrate in the cancer cells they may be located anywhere in the body and so this is what is being used to actually treat and these are all uh, patients now the inclusion criteria are, are multiple these are patients who failed everything you know and they are uh, uh, resistant to hormonal therapy they have extensive disease and so this is something which is helping this has been around now since some time 
and uh, uh, more and more patients are coming in for uh, lutetium therapy uh, uh, with PSMA. So there are some inclusion criteria, of course, the WBC levels have to be. Uh, and remember, these are all uh, patients who are uh, quite sick since it's extensive disease. Uh, 2,000 hemoglobin, more than 8, platelets, more than 75,000. Creatinine should be less than 2. We rule out obstructive renal disease. And the ECOG should be uh, less, less than equal to 2. And what is ECOG? There is a ECOG performance scale. And this actually is uh, showing us the physical and uh, capability of a patient. Uh, ECOG score of zero is when someone is fully active. I, I'm going into this because this is something which we as radiologists actually don't uh, really know about. At least I didn't know about it. Uh, 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 zero is fully active, able to perform all pre-illness activities without restrictions. One is there's limitation in vigorous physical activity, but he can stand and do soft work. For example, mild home and office work. Uh, 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 scale uh, 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 2 is standing and doing his own work but unable to work and able to spend more than half of the daylight hours on his feet. These are the people who will fall in the criteria to undergo lutetium uh, therapy uh, uh, in, in their gl given clinical setting. Those who are in 3 and 4 where they have difficulty in self-care, sleeping for more than half of the daylight hours or sitting in a chair or cannot self-care, fully dependent on chair or bed, these are patients who are as yet not to be included for lutetium therapy. Before treatment, of course, we need to get a good history from the patient, collect information about pre-treatment stage of the disease, the treatments that have been applied, previous procedures, pathology results, everything. So, you know, we as radiologists or nuclear medicine specialists, need to do this very, very thoroughly. Uh, then we, uh, a gallium six PSMA scan should have been done at least within two weeks before the treatment. Within that two week period, if it has been done earlier, then we need to repeat it. Of course, club uh, complete blood count, uh, biochemistry, and of course, other bio biochemical parameters. It's given intravenously, takes about 30 minutes for the drug to infuse into the bloodstream. Of course, we need to give anti-nausea medicines and diuretics. Diuretics help to flush the lutetium from the system as quickly as possible. And this is an outpatient uh, treatment. Uh, after you've given it, patient has to wait in the department for a few hours or longer. Of course, it's a special room, shielded room, where the patient is injected and waits. Uh, and once his radiation levels start coming down, within about four hours, you can send him back home. A day after treatment, he'll have an imaging test, a SPECT scan. This checks to make sure therapy hit the right targets. And it's a dosimetry scan. It shows you where all the lutetium concentrated. There can be side effects, dry mouth, dry eyes, nausea, vomiting, fatigue. Most of these symptoms go away in a few days. There's a small chance dry eyes and mouth can be permanent. A few people have a dip in blood counts because uh, lutetium can affect the bone marrow. Uh, lutetium can also target uh, healthy organs that have very small amounts of PSMA, like the salivary glands, and that's why you get a dry mouth, uh, 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 small intestine, and the kidneys. The recommended dose, of course, is about 200 uh, microcuries. And, uh, you know, you inject this in two to three minutes and follow it with 500 ml of normal saline infusion over the next 30 to 40 minutes. Now, how often can we give this? Depending on the response, uh, lutetium-177 can be administered every four to six weeks and till a maximum as yet of six doses. Of course, depending uh, uh, absolutely on how uh, uh, the treatment uh, affected and the side effects that a patient may encounter. Now, this is uh, uh, one of our cases. This is an initial pre-therapy image where you can see extensive metastatic disease. And remember, these are patients where everything has been tried. 
surgery, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy, castration, whatever. Everything has been tried. And this is the final, final treatment. This is the change you see after the first cycle. There is reduction in both the number as well as the size of the lesions. Further reduction after the second cycle. And this nearly complete clearance after the third cycle and uh, actually if necessary one today uh, uh, has the approval to go up to six cycles. So uh, uh, like I said FDA, US FDA uh, gave its approval on, in, on March 23, 2022 and uh, um, like I said uh, these are, uh, uh, you know, PSMA positive metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer who have been treated with androgen receptor pathway inhibition and taxane based chemotherapy. Still, there's no response. <clears throat> and uh, of course, uh, it can be given every six weeks for up to six doses or until di disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. So in conclusion, uh, let me say that uh, prostate cancer, which is a very, very common cancer, most of us would know some patient amongst our friend circle or uh, amongst our relatives. Uh, the, the PSA levels, and it has been controversial, whether PSA uh, should be routinely done as a part of a health check or not, I for one would say that I uh, uh, err on the side of doing it at least once a year. And if there is suspicion of uh, prostate uh, uh, abnormality, then the first test to be done is an ultrasound. If the PSA level is such and clinically you suspect, remember, the prostate cancer also has genetic undertones. So uh, then after that, you do a multi-parametric uh, prostate uh, MRI, try to localize the lesion, uh, then a fusion biopsy. If you have the fusion system or biopsy by whatever means that a, a radiologist or a urologist is familiar with, and following that, what I've uh, talked about, the PSMA PET CT, and where necessary uh, as a life-saving uh, procedure, the uh, lutetium therapy. Uh, theranostics, uh, I would say, is not the future. It is the present. It is about personalized and precision molecular radiation therapy. Thank you so very much for a patient hearing and for giving me this uh, opportunity uh, to share some of our work uh, uh, with you. Thank you.